Good morning. We welcome you to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church, the Church on the Way, with open arms and open hearts. Please be reverent while we worship. We encourage you to fully participate in our service with responses and with song. Please use the chat to add your prayers, thanksgivings, and petitions before the sermon so that we may include them in the service. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church. This is the Reverend Canon Winfred Vergara, and the voice of the people today is Shirley Jones. Happy or blessed Palm Sunday to all of you. Okay. 
All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We're truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and may the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 31, verse 9 to 16. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and, be and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and to my neighbors. It is made for to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. But I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon the, your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, church. A reading from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 9a. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as, though who, as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore 
I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O ruler of the, of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all of their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me. In accordance with your great mercy, I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the priest accuse him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, any one for whom they ask. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them, according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him, of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. There they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it, in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes who were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, 
Lama Sabakhtani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come down to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance, among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James the Younger, and of Joseph and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph Warimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if, it were, if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Good evening. Let us pray. To dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the braves dare not go. This is my quest. To follow the star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. To reach the unreachable, the unreachable, the unreachable star. Amen. Three trees had a dream. Tree number one dreamt of being a place where people can take their shades. Tree number two dreamt that he could go places. And tree number three dreamt that he would be the tallest tree in the world. One day, a woodcutter came and cut all of them. And they thought that all their dreams were in vain. But lo and behold, the woodcutter took the first tree and made it into a little house on the prairie where his family would live. Then he took the second tree and made it into a small boat and used it to carry people down and across the river. The third tree was abandoned. And for a long time, it simply became a driftwood, not knowing its direction, but simply going where the waves will bring it. But one day in Jerusalem, a man was condemned to die on Calvary. And the soldiers found the log and fashioned it into a cross. Then they had this condemned man carry it down the Via Dolorosa into Mount Calvary. The tree, the third tree, which has become a log, forgotten for a long time, 
has now become an old rugged cross and it could hardly bear the pressure but in when it was lifted up all the world looked up to the cross where Jesus was at the center of it this tree which was once a driftwood had finally realized its dream to become the tallest tree in the world Jesus at the center of the cross once said when I am lifted up I will draw all the world unto me my friends what is your dream better still what is God's dream for you how do you fulfill your dream what would you sacrifice in exchange for that dream on this Palm Sunday the readings give us tremendous insights on how Jesus acted on his dream. At the processional, we read about his triumphant entry to Jerusalem. Then in the reading of the gospel, we patiently listen to his passion, his arrest, his trial, his crucifixion, and of course, his resurrection. There are three principles on how Jesus fulfilled God's dream. And these are the principles that could help us fulfill our own dream or God's dream for us. The first principle is obedience. The father's dream for his son is to be the savior of the world. That is the meaning of the name Jesus. He was called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And Jesus accomplished that mission through his obedience. St. Paul wrote in Philippians 2, verse 6 to 8, Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on the cross. And therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So Jesus was a missionary. He was sent by the Father. And he acted on that mission by means of obedience. My friends, we are missionaries too. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. We are sent by Jesus to bear good fruits and become bearers of the good news. The Great Commission says, go ye and make disciples of all nations. And lo, I am with you till the end of the age. So if you must fulfill God's dream for you, learn obedience through his son Jesus second principle is focus focus in Galilee Jesus prepared his disciples for the work of mission he mentored them he taught them the art of healing of preaching of praying and of making miracles he even taught them how to cast out demons but his main focus was to save the world and he never wavered from that priority. Luke chapter 9 verse 51 says, He set his face to Jerusalem. For it was in Jerusalem that his mission would find its completion. One of the many symbolisms of Jesus is that of an eagle. If you notice in some of the Episcopal and Anglican churches, the pulpit are shaped like an eagle. This is to signify that from the church, the word of God shall fly into the farthest ends of the earth. The eagle has an extraordinary focus. It hovers above the sky, but it can spot a chick thousands of miles away because it has eagle's eyes. So Jesus had, a, had an extraordinary focus. And there was urgency in his mission and call for discipleship. 
In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, he said, No one who puts a hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. One man said, Let me bury my father first before I follow you. Jesus replied, Let the dead bury the dead. When a rich young ruler asked him to how to inherit God's kingdom, Jesus said, Go, sell your possessions and give the money to the poor, and come follow me, and you will have treasure in heaven. Even his own disciples, Jesus was blunt with regards to focus. When Peter learned that he and the other disciples would be martyred except for John, Peter asked, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to Peter, If it is my will that he remains until I come, until I come again, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. In other words, mind your own business. Don't compare your dreams with other people's dreams. God has a specific dream for you. Successful leaders are leaders who practice and live by the principles of focus, priority, and consistency. I once had an acquaintance from California who never got settled in one job or one business. He was a brilliant man, but he had a scattered brain and an impatient attitude. First, he was a car salesman, and he went to our church inviting some members to buy him to buy a car. Now at the time, the people were not ready to buy a car. So they told him to give them his phone number so that they could call him when they were ready. Alas, when they called him, he was no longer in the car business. He was already in the insurance business. So he came again and talked about life insurance. Now at the time, the church people uh, who do not want to talk about death were not ready to buy insurance but again they asked him for his new telephone number just in case they decide but alas by the time they had decided to call him for the insurance he was no longer in the insurance business he was already in the funeral business now funeral business requires patience. You have to wait for people to get sick, to get worse, and finally to die. And so when the time for the bereaved family to look for him, to engage his services for their departed loved ones, he was no longer in the funeral business. He was already in his own funeral. So to realize God's dream for you, you must have focus, consistency prioritization Jesus set his face to Jerusalem and he never allowed the devil to distract him from his mission of saving humankind from sin amen a third principle sacrifice after the Last Supper Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to pray as was his custom in that prayer he had an intense dialogue with the father on the nature of his mission saving the world with the price of his own blood being fully human as he was fully divine the specter of pain and death was real and jesus prayed father if you are willing remove this cup from me yet not my will but yours be done because that was the only way to reconcile the world to god he said following the words of her mother of his mother mary let it be done to me according to thy word. My friends, if God has a dream for you, you may wrestle with God, you may bargain with God, but ultimately you must say, not my will, but thy will be done. For in the end, it will be for your own good. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. As the song says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. There is no religion without sacrifice. Without God's there is no glory. Without pain there is no gain. 
Without crucifixion, there is no resurrection. Without sacrifice, there is no victory. So why do we call Good Friday good? Because Sunday is coming. The Christian life, the life that Jesus had shown by his example, is not a pie in the sky that you get by and by. The Christian life is an engagement in the world with all its complexities, its failures and successes, its trials and glories, its suffering and its hopes. So we must be willing to sacrifice for the dream that God dreams for us. A larva struggles to get out from the cocoon, becomes a caterpillar and turns into a butterfly. Gold is refined by fire. Pearls are formed from the friction of oyster with the sand inside the shell. So let us turn our fears into faith. Bloom where we are planted. Rise up after every fall. Grow from what we go through. Turn our stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Our adversities into adventures. Our scars into stars. And our cross shall become crowns. Because you are God's own, no dream for you is impossible. My friends, on this most holy week, may we learn from the way of the cross. The way of the cross is the way of glory. Amen. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, or Lord, who was crucified, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in, to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, our Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Let you create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to save us, to take upon him our nature, and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant, O Lord, that we may walk in the way of his suffering, and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, hear our prayer for this parish family of St. Joseph's Episcopal Church of Queen's Village. Strengthen the faithful, revive the inactive, restore the penitent, 
and inspire us for mission. Grant to us all things necessary for our common life. Provide for our ministries and bring us to unity of heart and mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Though willing in spirit, we are still weak in the flesh. So let us appeal to God's mercy saying, help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, let the same mind be in your church that was in Christ Jesus. With bended knees and confessing tongues, make us able to live his way of humility and obedience. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, in your tender love, you send your Son, our Savior Jesus, to take upon him our human nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Give us hearts to also love every human being. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, bless the trees. In celebration of your son, we waved their branches. In our sinful violence, we took what you made good and created a wooden cross. O oh God, bless the trees. Help us, O oh Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, Look upon our beautiful city. Forgive us our violent ways. Even in hard times, let us not become a reproach to our neighbors. Make your face to shine upon the city. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, we pray for those who are wasted by grief, whose years are filled with sighing. We pray for those whose strength has failed and whose bones are consumed. In your loving kindness, save them. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you took human form. You died on the cross. You shared with us life and death. We trust the dead to your care. We trust our lives to you. Help us, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Show your goodness, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Look past our selfish desires and remember your own faithfulness. In your great compassion, consider our petitions, and in your mercy, do in our lives that which is truly good. We pray in the name of your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray for those celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries and ask God to bless them. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year, rather they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness and love all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remembering all those birthday celebrants. Now, remembering those who celebrate their wedding anniversary. Most gracious God, look with favor upon these, your servants, as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your grace and blessing, that they may continue to cherish each other and to grow in love and peace, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To those who are traveling, Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find everywhere, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, 
protect them from any danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray for the people of the world recovering from earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, fire, and other natural disasters. We pray for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, the West Bank, and occupied Palestine. We pray for the ongoing war in Ukraine and the genocides in Palestine, Congo, Sudan, and Tigray. We pray that we may recognize the humanity of those who are suffering. We pray for compassion and mercy, for the thousands who have died, for those made homeless, for the thirsty and the hungry, for those who mourn and those who have been held hostage. We pray for the voice of God to be heard. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away our arrogance and hatred, which infect our hearts to break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your own good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Olivia asks us to continue to pray for her, her sister Sylvia, that she may be healed from her illness. Shirley and Percival Jones and family would like to thank St. Joseph's for all the prayers, calls, texts, and support upon the deaths in Percival's family. We are slowly healing and are so grateful for the love and care from our St. Joseph's family. Thank you. And we ask that you include the, the following people and families in your daily prayers. Afwa, Agatha, Allison, Ansel, Anne, Anthony, Anwar K and family, Audi, Audley, Audrey, Avril, Azaque, Barbara, Beverly, Cesarine, Chandra R, Charles K, Christopher, Clarence, Claudette, Crystal, Daniela, Daphne A, Daphne P, David, Deborah, Desiree, Desmond G, Desmond S, Doreen, Dorothy, Dossie, Ida, Idris, Edson, Eric, Eulalie, Fitzroy, Freddie, George, Gloria, Greta, Harold, Heather, Hyacinth, James, Janelle, John E, John L, Joy, Julene, Justice, Kathleen, Keisha, Larry, Layton, Leonard, Lois, Marsha, Marilyn, Marina, Marlon, Marshall, Mary, Maureen, Melissa A and Melissa A, Michael, Michelle, Natalie, Nicola, Nisha, Noel J and Noel K, Norma J, Norma M, Orinthia, Pat W, Pat Z, Patsy, Peggy, Peter, Rosa, Rosalind M and Rosalind S, Rose, Rupert, Ruth, Sade, Sheila S, Shelly R, and Shelly R, Sonia, Sister Sheila, Beverly, and Yolanda. And you may now speak aloud the names of those for whom you would like to pray. Christine Corrigan. Judy Gear. Guard. Terry. Let's pray for Haiti. Princess Kate Middleton. Pray for healing to all those whom we mentioned, as well as those in our hearts. God of all power and wisdom, by the might of your command, drive away from our bodies all sickness and all infirmity. Grant to us, your servants, your healing touch, so that their weaknesses may vanish and their strength renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. friends, those listening, especially to our broadcast. When you are blessed by our ministry, we invite you to donate. To support us, please visit our website at www.stjosephqv.org slash donate or scan this QR code by opening the camera on your cell phone, scanning this image and clicking on the yellow link that pops up. God bless you. Thank you. Let us pray. 
Creator God, you made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You have blessed us with abundant, abiding love, so that we may be inspired to live generously. From your plentiful gifts, we give you our own first fruits, the gathering of our time, talent, and treasure. May they be a blessing to the world. Amen. A great, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God. Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before I say the final benediction, thank you again, Petra, for this PowerPoint and happy blessed Palm Sunday to all of you. And uh, we'll see you at the 11, uh, well, it's going to be 1045 for the uh, Palm Sunday celebration at St. Thomas Episcopal Church building. And we will start uh, with the blessing of the palms before we go to procession. And it's going to be another wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. The sun is rising from my window. So glory to God whose power working in us can infinitely do more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. My song is love unknown My Savior's love to me Love to the loveless Shown that they might lovely be Oh, who am I That for my sake My Lord should take frail flesh and die He came from His blessed throne Salvation to bestow But such disdain so few that longed for Christ They strew his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day. Oh, 
Hosanna's to their King. Then crucify is all their breath, and for His death they thirst. my Lord done what makes this rage and spite he made the lame to run he gave the blind their sight sweet injuries yet they had these themselves displeased and against Good gladly spent 